Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, her son is handsome. He's lost everything. And homeless. He's been living in snake-infested woods. He's been arrested. Have you stolen from your family? I never thought of it as robbing because I always planned on paying everything back. He was making six figures. You had a decent job, right? Oh, yeah. Now, mom says his fiance. Why'd you get fired? Because I was with Tabitha. He's ruining his life. She called Tabitha a street rat, poor trash, alcoholic, drug addict. It's an addictive type relationship. We asked you for help. You only asked me for money, honey. Tabitha has been a really good guiding compass for me. But she has guided you right into the forest. You're living in a tent. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. People say life is just kind of like a game, you know? Yeah. Some people are handed a good deck, which, I don't know, such things like loving parents, good health, education, and money, while others are dealt a not-so-good deck with dysfunctional families, poverty, homelessness, and mental illness. Now, Brenda says her 27-year-old son, Chris, was dealt an amazing hand. He grew up in a beautiful house, took nice vacations, and had a great education, had loving parents who supported him. But now, Brenda says, her son has lost his $100,000 a year job and is now homeless, living in the woods in a tent. <laughs> Take a look. Chris was this tall, good-looking, well-dressed, well-spoken, well-educated young guy. Here's his graduation with the family. Such a nice looking kid. He had a beautiful home and a car. This is his room. He wanted the room with the balcony. He loved to dress nice. He had tuxedos. I was very proud of him. We have a really close relationship. He had all that and he lost it. This is what I pulled Chris out of the woods with. This is what's left of all of his lifelong possessions. And it's in a black, plastic garbage bag. Everything we've done, this is where he's at. I cannot believe that he is okay and happy living the life he's living. How did this affluent boy go from a silver spoon to a plastic spoon? Brenda says it's all because of one thing. What would you think? Yeah. A girl. A girl named Tabitha. <laughs> My son Christopher and his girlfriend Tabitha are in an addictive relationship. It's destroying their lives and they don't realize it. Christopher was in recovery from an addiction. Tabitha found him at the AA meeting and ever since they've been together, he's been making one bad choice after the other, which has resulted in him losing his dream job. He's been arrested, he's been homeless, he's been living in snake infested woods. He's lost everything and we are estranged as a family. After he started hanging out with her, I went crazy on him. I said, are you that stupid to be in this relationship with this girl? And then I went on to just rip her apart. I criticized how stupid she was, how she's uneducated, how she's missing teeth, she probably did meth. I was really brutal. <laughs> It's unimaginable to me that we will have to go our entire life without Chris being part of our family. It is horrible. I would like Christopher to end this relationship with Tabitha immediately and get the help he needs. Well, Chris says he just refuses to leave Tabitha's side. And that their love story, well, he says it's like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> It was a complete surprise to have to live in the woods after growing up with such privilege. Tabitha, growing up on the streets, had a little more savvy. Something I always tried to maintain is cleanliness, but it's kind of hard when you don't have a shower or a toilet or 
Amir. Tabitha has always been more of the guiding star. She's more of my guiding compass. My mother definitely believes that Tabitha is a lower class. She called Tabitha a street rat, low down thug, poor trash, or alcoholic drug addict. My mother is extremely controlling in every aspect of my life. And if it wasn't her way, it wasn't the right way. <laughs> if my mom were to successfully try to split Tabitha and I up, I would personally go nuts. I've had nightmares and stress and anxiety about my mom actually doing such a thing. Tabitha and I, we don't want to spend time apart. We love each other. We are each other's best friends. I would definitely describe my relationship with Tabitha as a Romeo and Juliet situation. I come from money and a really great family life, where she comes from quite the opposite. Lives on the streets her whole life, had to kind of take care of herself. So this will be all right. Uh, we can actually have a nice fire here. I would like to say to my mom, I wish that you would give Tabitha a real chance. She's an amazing human being, and she deserves your love, too. Okay. Wow. Um, Romeo and Juliet, huh? Absolutely. I had no clue they thought they were Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, it's a tragedy. You object to this whole thing? 300%. Do you care at all what she thinks? I mean, of course I care. Um, she's my mom. But as far as breaking up with Tabitha, I don't... Well, that's not fair. She's been a really good guiding uh, my, compass for me. Living in the woods, Chris? Homeless? Calling me from street corners? And this is the guiding compass of love. First off, you, you, you're here today for some help, right? Yes, sir. Okay, first lesson, you got to pick your battles. Okay. Now, according to you, uh, Brenda has called Tabitha a street rat, low-class, trailer trash, white trash, low-down trash. I mean, she, yes. that's how she describes Juliet, yeah. uh, the, the love of your life. Mm -hmm. And that's offensive to your sensibilities. Absolutely. Okay, and... She, didn't even, she didn't, doesn't even know her, and yet she looked her up online and... You know, made her judgments right from there. And uh, and I'll, she's your guiding, but she, you say, this is my guiding light in life. And, well, but she has guided you right into the forest. You're living in a tent It in wasn't the her. I would, if anything, I mean, I can take the responsibility <clears throat> just Have you as guided much. her into the forest? I mean, are you two bringing out the worst in each other? I, no, if anything, I mean, we're just fighting to stay together. We're fighting to get back on our feet i mean we're we're kind of i mean yeah we've done a lot of bad things in our past and things that are immature and we both have known that but we both are constantly making every day an effort to do better to better ourselves and to better each what other you say you're working i'm only part-time so uh, why are you not working 60 70 hours a week total somewhere why are you not working two jobs three jobs four jobs five, uh, whatever it's extremely oh well, first most companies aren't offering you need a vehicle and we don't have a vehicle. You had a vehicle. I'm trying... So why are you, know, you in the woods? I, I'm just trying to figure out why you're living in the woods. Why, why, why you're not... I mean, you have two young, able-bodied well, people. We, you can't get enough money together to get some entry-level apartment somewhere and live... I mean, it's it, very it, difficult to get money for, you know, uh, deposit, utilities, the mm -hmm. whole thing, to put it all down and then... Why you did know. you lose the job you had? You had a decent job, right? Oh, yeah. I had why, why did you lose it? Uh, in my opinion, I believe it was because my mom had talked to. Uh, you say he lost it because. How did you get that job? You say he lost it because of Tabitha. Yes, sir. How did how? she cause him to lose the job? Because when he uh, came back to Florida to do the job after he was trained for two weeks by his employer, he decided to travel across the state in a company vehicle and from there picks her up, brings her back. He's whining, dining, eating on a company charge card in a company paid hotel. She, I you never paid for pay her for with that. She, that was not. I never it was against your boss's. And why was it against my boss's requirement that I have. In any other job situation in, in the world, did He's you misappropriate never the resources? Never, never. The only thing Why'd maybe they would is because I was with Tabitha, back with her, and the agreement was because I, when I first got the job, and my mom uh, wanted to warn. Did she interfere warn. with your job and get you fired? Well, she, yeah, she did. Uh, when I first was going to get the job, uh, I was all set up to go and fly up there, up to New Jersey, uh, to start working, and everything kind of got 
I don't know, canceled in a way when why? I finally... Why? Because I why? Because you, came you stole from us again, Not and so I was not expecting that. You stole from us again, and I couldn't have you back in the house, and I had to take I you to a Salvation Army. I wasn't back in your house. Army. I was... Because I took you to a Salvation Army. And why did night. you do that? I, why did you do that? Because I couldn't have you in our house. No, I think it was because you <clears throat> wanted me to suffer. You said yes. it, too. You said to me, no, yeah. you haven't suffered enough. You're going to control my rock bottom? I was, because I care about you. I really didn't want you to be in and prison. And I understand that you care, I and I understand you're probably very hurt. for you to hit that you could live through, but maybe wake up before you ended up with another arrest record. I don't want to visit you in prison. Neither do, uh, neither do I. Well, that's the route you're on. Prison or dead. Have you stolen from your family? I always plan on paying everything back. Every That's day. called a loan. You yes. didn't do that. No. You stole it. Stop being a punk ass thief and blaming other people for the consequences. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. Was this teacher obsessed with her student? I woke up and all my stuff was in her house. How do you just wake up in a professor's house? Did you give her drugs? No. Yes. Was this student? She said, I'm going to ruin your career. Did you get her fired? Yes. Schooling her teacher. You're moving a student into your house and giving her answers to a test. You're blaming the victim. I was victimized by her. Monday. Then on Tuesday, was dad crushing pills with his daughter in the house? My daughter crushed the candy. Who showed you how to do that? Daddy. I would never teach that to a child. That's Tuesday. My mother definitely believes that Tabitha is a lower class because she drove by her house and she was horrified. Tabitha's family's house is a rundown kind of place. It's not very big, especially compared to my standards. There's a lot of insects, the wood is falling apart, roaches are everywhere, there's a leaky roof, there's tree branches everywhere. My mother made her assumptions about Tabitha way before meeting her. Brenda says her 27-year-old son, Chris, is in a very dangerous relationship with a girl who she calls a street rat. Ever since her son met Tabitha, she says his life has gone downhill. Have you stolen from your family? In the past, yes, I have, and, it, and I regret everything. And I will admit, I've had problems with what why What have you stolen stole. from your family? I mean, I stole jewelry. I stole um, stuff out of the garage, like tools, um, Cameras, instruments. laptops, videos. That was all mine. Brenda says Chris has stolen a lot from the family. Brenda's ring, which is a gift from uh, her husband Phil. Brenda's grandmother's wedding ring, diamond earring, Zach's saxophone three times, his brother Zach three times, garage freezer, Phil's credit card, gold necklaces, bracelets, video games, Xbox, the cross stick, suitcase with grandmother's antiques, grandfather's watch, three or four hundred dollars emergency cash, Power tools, power saw, $3,000 cash from brother. Yeah. If you're stealing this stuff from the family, aren't you the one that cut off the family? Because let me tell you, you start stealing that kind of stuff from me, you're burning the bridge, not me. And it's I, burning from your end, not mine. And I absolutely agree with that. And I, and in terms why are you saying insurance? she's the one that cuts you it, off? When I was calling across the state... Will you let them answer my question, or do you want me to just step out and you do this? Because I think you guys can argue at home. <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Answer the question. You can bicker no, with her I, later. No, I, um, I Don't would, you own I would the separate? I do own the, the, the responsibility. No, no, I do own the responsibility of my past actions. Then why do you say doubt. she's the one that cuts you off from everything? Because she is continually, even though, we, I mean, I really am trying. I really realize that those, I made some really bad when mistakes. When you choose was, the behavior, you choose the consequences. Absolutely. When you victimize your family and friends, you choose the consequences of severing those relationships. And, Yes, you don't blame her absolutely. for that. Absolutely, and I agree with that. But I'm not going to say I was 100% in the right mindset. I'm not going to say that, you know, I, I wasn't. I wasn't I wasn't thinking straight. I wasn't, I was immature. But you don't was, rob people and then say, oh, you don't I, want me and around I anymore? I never wanted no, to, and no. I never thought of it as robbing. And this is where it kind of gets a little weird because I always planned on paying everything back. I planned on going and getting, you know, a better job. And it's 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 delusional thinking. I understand that now. But, like, that's why I'm saying, like, I, I, I really regret everything I did. And every... And it has landed me in the woods. It has landed me a horrible relationship with my family. And it is my fault. I agree with that. But as However, long as you're I sorry. Am, no, and if you, no, and I, if you plan to pay I it back, that's day. called a loan. Okay, yes. That's where you go to someone and say, may I borrow yes, $3,000? And, it it, and it You was, didn't do that. No. You stole it. Absolutely. And it was wrong. And I, you know, 
And I figured because it was my family, it wouldn't matter. I figured I can always pay it back. I figured well, it was mine then anyway. Well, I told her one thing. Wrong. Her first piece of advice is pick your battles. Your first piece of advice is stop being a punk-ass thief and blaming other people for the consequences. I agree with that. I'm not, I, I haven't stolen anything since then. Not one thing. Okay. Well, except for dining and dashing, which I'll admit. But that was different. <laughs> but, listen, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I am very sorry for the things I've done. I'm not gonna say that, uh, you know, I deserve leniency or anything like that because it's it was ex it is extremely wrong. I'm just saying that I've been through. I mean, we've been through a lot, and I mean, every day you know we try and we just put one foot forward. And the only thing I can do is the best that I can for every day. And we, you know, we're the going. The best to you can is not going into a restaurant, running up a two hundred dollar bar tab plus food, and then running out the door. Yeah, I know that. But you know, at the same time, uh, but we what? just. What's the but? The but is that we are we are homeless. We have no like I I mean no future, no nothing, and we do have a an alcohol issue and like we're working on these things. And I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not. I'm far from it. And I'm just saying that I'm doing the best I can now. And I and through our relationship with Tabitha, through my relationship with her, she's actually made me grow up. She made me see. Was she how, with you when you ripped off this restaurant? She she was, okay. but it wasn't really her. It wasn't really her choosing and knowing. It was it definitely she was just more following me. So I mean, you were her my, guiding light in that. In that situation, uh, not a light. Not a when light. we come back, we're going to meet Chris's Juliet Tabitha. She says just because she has a criminal record, it doesn't mean she won't make a good wife. We'll meet her when we come back. quarter mile to try and find a safe place away from anybody else. This is an example of what happens when you leave your home even for a second. Other homeless people will come and just take whatever they want. Tuesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Like father. We caught dog crushing and snorting pills in the bathroom. Like daughter. My daughter crushed the candy. Who told you how to do that? Daddy. I would never teach that to a child. Then on Wednesday, exes at war. He says you are keeping his children from him. Fighting each other. He was kicked out after he threw me to the wall. You pushed me, I pushed you back. You grabbed my throat and then I grabbed I your throat. I didn't grab your throat. And fighting for custody. You did coke while you were with her? Yes, sir. After the kids were put to bed. That's Wednesday. Being homeless in the woods with Tabitha and our dog Zen was without a doubt the worst experience of my life. A lot of the homeless people, we, we can't go anywhere near them because they'll rob us. Who knows what they'll do in the night. I'm a germaphobe. I don't like being dirty. I don't like germs. And to be in the woods is extremely difficult for me. You can imagine waking up after a rainstorm in a hot, humid tent, mud everywhere, and you gotta use the bathroom. We would shower in pools. Sometimes we would use a hose at like the community park and just kind of rinse off. We had to trek a quarter mile to try and find a safe place away from anybody else. This is an example of what happens when you leave your home even for a second. Other homeless people will come and just take whatever they want. They take the poles out, they took, you know, our tarp. You know, they, they'll find you. <laughs> Tabitha and I, we need a place for support. We're constantly struggling. You know, there's a home, uh, other homeless camp. We could use some help. Brenda would like to see his relationship with Tabitha end right now. But Tabitha says, <laughs> that's just not gonna happen. When I first met Chris, he was just absolutely amazing. Chris swept me off my feet. I never thought he would pick me. After me and Chris started dating, we were never apart. When I first met Miss Brenda, she didn't want to connect with me. I feel like Mrs. Brenda's a little hoity-toity. She doesn't approve of us being together, and I think it's because of where I come from and how I grew up. My family doesn't come with a lot of money. I know his family does. Chris has kind of sheltered me on what she's said. He's told me a few things, but I know it would just like affect the relationship for him to say things. I feel like Mrs. Brenda is brainwashed by society. I feel like she really needs some counseling. She's just 
very strong, like a bulldog. She wants everything to go her way. After the first meeting with his mom, she ended up kicking him out for no apparent reason except for that his mom wasn't happy when he was dating me. I feel like she was just trying to be spiteful. Mrs. Brenda tried to separate us. She said, oh, what would you do if someone offered to give you help? I said, it depends because your form of help is to try to tear me and Chris apart. We're in it for the long run and we're in it together. It's us against the world. Well, Tabitha is joining us now, as well as Chris's stepfather, uh, Phil. So I appreciate both of you being here. Tabitha, as you know, Brenda is not a fan. Uh, she thinks you're a negative influence in her son's life. All of his mistakes were kind of before me, except for that last incident. And we've just, honestly, like Chris has been saying, like we've been trying to step forward, and all of his stealing and stuff was before he even met me. Uh -huh. So, in fact, so. You, you two met at an AA meeting, and you were working a 12-step program, and we're pretty deep into that program at the time you two met, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, a lot of the, uh, the stealing from the family, a lot of that water was under the bridge before you two ever right. connected. Is that what you're saying? Oh, we were still worried. I mean, it, there, it wasn't under the bridge, not nowhere near. I mean, well, because we're... that's why he was in the program was because he had made those bad decisions, uh -huh. and that's when we had met. And since he's been with me, I've gotten him to at least get a job. And sorry, it's not like a proper, like high class job, but at least he has a job. A job is good, but a job living, I didn't know he oh, was home. Oh, because it's a dead end job. It's not good enough. It is a dead end job. That's so not what? even it. At least he's trying to do something for himself. And he's living in the woods, dear. Income levels aside. Honesty, I think, is something that all four of us should have. Okay. And I have to say that I didn't feel, as we went through our relationship, and we started to be honest when we sat and had lunch twice, but we, we haven't been honest with each other, you know, through, throughout even the time when we, were gonna, when we were going to pick you up. Tabitha texted Brenda and said, oh, he's, he's, he's all drunk, and then, and then you texted back and said, no, I'm not drunk. She is. So there was, there's all these... I mean, there's all these honesty issues that, I, and that, and pick your battles. I I, un, I understand that too, but I've had a problem. Well, honesty is a good battle to pick. I agree with you. That's a good battle to pick. And I would like to say and that I am so so sorry. I betrayed your trust, and especially my father's too. I mean, he he's been nothing but supportive and amazing, and I really am sorry. I really if like this, so. yeah. If this isn't another addiction, I, I'm fine with it. But it just feels to me like it goes from one addiction to the next. Mm -hmm. That's all we can't get through to them. That we really believe he's in another addictive relationship. As a, you know, you may as well call her Little Miss Heroin and her mother and father call them Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Meth and call her environment around her Roxy Oxy and Spice because to me, he's just swapping one addiction for another. Not that you do that, not that your parents do, I'm just making an analogy. Yeah. I didn't say you used it, I was trying to make a point that he is hey, in a very... spiteful. No, I'm trying to well, show you're that you... are actions and words. I'm Miss. showing that he is in an addictive relationship. It's an addiction love, not a love base that's healthy. Okay, coming up, Brenda says she's worried Chris and Tabitha are trying to have a baby in order to get public housing. very much like to have a child. If she becomes pregnant, we then actually do qualify for housing. It would actually be a blessing all around. Christopher is learning how to be homeless and work the welfare system, which very odd to me that being on food stamps, yet Tabitha has got money for cigarettes. I haven't seen her without a cigarette in her face, constantly chain smoking. I'm like, how does that make sense? It makes me crazy. Brenda is now worried that this homeless duo will become a trio. Take a look at this, then we'll talk, and I'll hear what you have to say. Tabitha and I aren't using any type of birth control. We would very much like to have a child, so we're kind of leaving it up to God. If she becomes pregnant, we then actually do qualify for housing. So we would be in a better off situation if she was pregnant than if she wasn't. It would actually be a blessing all around if we had a kid. Tabitha said she wouldn't drink and, you know, I'd be strict on the budget, never, you know. 
touch another drug. If Christopher and Tabitha think that by having a child and then qualifying for free housing and that this is going to be the launch of their wonderful happily ever after career, they are doing exactly what sick addicts do. Addicts use people. They are so misguided and delusional that I can't stand it. Tabitha should know that already. I mean, did she get what she needed in life? Well, let's do that again. Let's keep the cycle of stupidity going. Now, you two are both smirking and rolling your eyes. And before yeah. we said this, I, I said that you were considering having a, a child. And you're going, no, 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 no. Then we just played the tape where you're saying, nice yeah, we're just going to let God have his way. We're, d we're right. having unprotected sex. If we have a child, if that's God's will, we have a child, then that would be a blessing for everybody because we would be eligible for housing. I would never touch another drop. She would stop smoking, drinking. It would, that would, that like would just fix that everything. Was, I like how that was cut and put together because that's not how, how we, we, we said it. If we end up having a kid, it would help. Not even. I'm not, 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 not saying, saying that. that like, we're Who would it we're, trying I'm saying to okay, how is that, longer. How is that different than what we just played? I'm saying that I'm in love and that we're in love and that we plan on having a full future together. But let's uh, and have then, one so we can get housing? I know, no. No, no. See, that's where I say it kind of got cut together. To whoa, be whoa, like whoa, that. whoa, 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 no. whoa. No, cut together my ass. Let's just fast forward to right now. having unprotected yeah, sex yes. mm -hmm. that's yes. not cut together you're having unprotected sex and you say if we have a baby then you said we would then be eligible for housing for us that wouldn't be smart to have a kid it's not and we both understand and then agree with that why are but you having gonna... unprotected sex because <laughs> we... we want a family we're not so you do want to get pregnant not immediately. We're not. I hear. Then stop having unprotected sex immediately. <laughs> oh, come on. No, what are you rolling your eyes for? Do you not. What, it, what? Tell me, what is it I'm saying that's so outrageously stupid? Is it not okay that we have unprotected sex? I know that we're in a bad situation and maybe it's not the best idea, but we do love each other. D does that mean it's not a good idea to have unprotected sex? Yes, that's what I am saying. I like to give a voice to those that don't have it. And if I may speak for this unborn child, this child would not want to be born into a situation that is not stable. You don't want to have a child born with a job. A job of pulling you together, pulling housing together, pulling any of those things together. That is irresponsible. I think most people will also say that you can't plan those kind of things. Yes, I mean, you can. can. <laughs> yes, you can. You can take precautions for those things. Are you kidding me? Okay, right. Well, well Brenda right. says when she found out about Tabitha, she did do a public arrest record search. Before she met me, yeah. In 08, scheme to defraud. Uh, 08, larceny theft. Uh, guilty felony. Those next uh, two sixteen oh nine contempt. Larceny theft. Three twenty five oh nine contempt. Larceny theft. Ten thirty oh nine violation of probation. Grand theft. Two twenty three eleven marijuana possession. Page two. Oh my God. Narcotic equipment possession, 5511, burglary, unoccupied conveyance, unarmed, 5511, burglary of structure, conveyance, out. unarmed, without person inside. Jump forward two years, resisting officer with violence, narcotic equipment possession. It's a shame that you constantly are looking at this no. and not seeing how sweet she is, how, not seeing how she takes care of me, how she My heart works. My for Tabitha, okay? I really, it really does. That's the only reason why you try to be nice to me? Because you pity me? I try to be nice to you because my son thinks he's in a healthy love relationship. And he I loves know that me. What's the problem I'm, with that? The problem is, is he's not in a healthy place to be in a relationship. And it's an addictive type relationship. And this relationship is bringing you both down. I care about you too. You don't belong, you don't belong sleeping in the woods. Somebody ought to be. Or you think I've worked my whole life to, to get out of that? Somebody ought to have been telling you, you deserve better too.
Oh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Chris and Tabitha have a dog that they call their son. I get okay. that. Brenda says that dog is part of the reason they live in the woods, and mm -hmm. she wants them to get rid of the dog. But we'll talk about that when we come back. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. The student. She started threatening me. The teacher. I think you're obsessed with me. The scandal. I woke up and all my stuff was in our house. How did you just wake up in a professor's house? That's Monday. Zen is a rescue dog. I absolutely love Zen and kind of adopted him as my son. We put his knees first, always. We love Zen very much and we're not going to give him up. For Chris to be so in love with their baby, as they call it, to the point that he would rather be in snake-infested woods than to give it to a humane society, it, it doesn't make any sense. If that dog were their baby, the state would take it away from them. Dr. Phil, the reason the dog is Go a ahead. problem is because when they were homeless calling me, begging me for help on the other side of the state, I told them, go to a shelter. We can't. No shelters will take the dog. I'm like, okay, so then I guess you're choosing to live on a corner with your belongings while you're begging me for help. I mean, this has been going on and on and on. So you, you would rather live in the woods and be homeless. It's not even... Then spoil up our even, family, yes. It's, the dog doesn't even deserve to live like that. We asked you for help and you, you kind of like... You me for money, honey. At this point, both of you have a history with drugs and alcohol, correct? Yeah. Right. Neither of you are clean and sober now. Yeah. Here we are. I mean, we're, 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 yeah, we're working on it. I mean, I'm not saying no. No, listen, I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm, not I'm just, I'm trying smoke. to get some factual information. <laughs> yeah. Because if, if I can't go Because I want to try and see ways that I might be able to help. And to do that, I need to know where you are. I, I can't help if I don't know we, where we you are. We go through like two weeks, three weeks of doing really good. Not, not a drug, not a drink. And we just, we, follow, we, we end up following, follow, following. And uh, going kind of, you know, like maybe not making the best decision about like going out to eat and then spending a little too much money on that, on, on maybe uh, on drinks okay. and things. Right. Um, so it's, it's extremely hard. If you're self-medicating, you still have a problem with alcohol. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm, yeah, I think no, so. <laughs> Sorry. Job. We're doing good. Sorry. I, it's just like, you are, you are right. I believe we are self-medicating. It's, it's hard because we live this area where almost like we have to live for today because we only have it. And it's like we're in the woods. Oh, we and we get rained on. We're, we're, we're looking for our food. We're trying to figure things out. And then we get, to, you know, you know what? Yeah, we're going to have a drink to... Go to sleep. To take that edge away. I mean, I'm sorry if you guys can't understand how it is to be living in the woods, trying to find, every, you know, you're, how you're going to eat, how you're going to survive, and walking back and forth five miles to work and that. It's a lot. And, yes, we are self, we have self-medicated. I'm not going to, you know, say that we haven't. Don't but... tell me. Tell me. This is y'all talking. I... <laughs> We're wasting our help time, huh? Yeah. yeah. So let's, yeah. let's yeah. get back Thank to you. it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so when you do fall off the wagon or folly or whatever you call it, um, alcohol, marijuana, pills, what, what is it? It's usually just alcohol. And okay, and when it's not alcohol, what would be the next thing? Um, smoke, I mean, we smoke use some hot. dope. Yeah, I mean, that's what that, yeah, that's, okay. goes with, co I mean, that goes with um, alcohol. But we'll do, like, I mean, we've done cocaine and other drugs, but not like recently. I said, not recently, not within, you know... Like a, well, not that long. We've done it a couple, you know. See, like how long since you've done it? Maybe it's a couple weeks ago yeah. now. Okay. I mean, it, yeah. So Wait, within the... I'm sorry. I'll never say another thing. <laughs> Can we agree that both of you would like to have a more stable living situation in terms of both safety and comfort? Yes. And your, your hope is that you would find some way to define this relationship in a healthy and constructive way. All right, coming up, Chris hasn't spoken to his younger brother, Zach, in two years. Uh, Zach has something to say to him when we come back. Oh. Sadly, 
Christopher does not seem to have any relationship with his younger brother. I find it very sad that they haven't spoken in a few years. I can't blame my younger son if he doesn't want anything to do with his older brother after what he's done to him. Growing up as a kid, Zachary and I were best of friends. I definitely like betrayed his trust and I really screwed up what was a really great brotherhood friendship with him and now I mean he doesn't really even talk to me. It hurts me to think about what I did to my brother. show without you, our studio audience. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Because we have a lot of fun here, don't we? Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Chris's younger brother, Zach, uh, did not want to participate in today's show because he says, well, he just frankly doesn't want to see or speak to his brother right now. He did send a letter for me to read to Chris, and it reads as follows. Chris, I'm appalled at how you got to this point in your life. Even throughout the pain and heartbreak you caused our parents, you had a family that was willing to push through and endure in hopes that you could turn your life around. It blows my mind that they still haven't given up on you and as a result got you this chance to fix your life with the Dr. Phil Show. If you don't find a way to work towards a solution for your life now, I doubt you ever will. And that is what makes me angry and sad. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for the two parents that continue to love and support you unconditionally. Even when the reasons to do so ran out. Zach. Um, now, I I'm a parent. Um, Robin and I have two boys. Um, one about the age of, uh, of yours here, and, um, you, both of our boys are over 18, so we've recognized quite some time ago, as you have yet to accept, is that when they get to a certain age, you become an influencer, not a controller. Your idea of finesse is to get a bigger hammer. You just hammer, 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 hammer. And you couldn't do more to cement this relationship together if you tried. Because there's just that part of young people that when you make something unattainable, it, it, it just gets on the list of you just can't have that. They just got to have that, you know? You're not going to break these two up. That's not going to happen. I'm just, I'm a realist. I'm just telling you. If, if you think there's something you're going to say to him or to her that they're going to go say, you know what? They're right. We, we need to... We didn't need to not see each other anymore. So thanks so much. Um, you take the tent, I'll take the poles, and we'll just... Uh, it's just not... That's, I'm, just, I'm just telling you the truth. I'd, I know you, that's not um, what you want to hear me tell you. It's okay. I, I don't but, know what to do. But that's, that's just simply not in the cards. That's not going to happen. And you may care whether they're together or not. I don't care whether they're together or not. What I care is if each of them are healthy and happy and moving forward in life. That's what I care about. Sit with that for a, a second, okay? okay? Hold, hold on to that thought. Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. 
Both of you, in my opinion, are active addicts and you've got a problem with drugs and alcohol that needs to be dealt with. I'm willing to help both of you with that to get you cleaned up, not in an effort to break you up, but in an effort to clean you up. You've not had much opportunity to get a leg up education-wise. I'm willing to help you in terms of getting your GED to get that done and get that behind you. Uh, I've also spoken with Manatee Technical College in your hometown, and they're offering to waive all tuition for you to go through a GED preparation program. Um, and they're offering, they're offering to pay for the GED test and get all of that done for you so you don't have any expense to do for that. And then that makes you eligible to continue your education if you want to do that. And I'm going to have our resource director sit down and talk to you two about making a serious commitment to going in to a, a, a rehab program. There is a place in South Padre Island called Hannah's House where you can get yourself on the right path. Fair enough? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, I want to thank all of my guests and a special thanks to Robert Park and uh, Origins Behavioral Health Care. Hey, thanks for being here today. So long. All right, we're going to talk to you backstage, all right? We're going to talk to you backstage. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.